The U.S. has officially rejoined the United Nations Human Rights Council, three years after former President Trump withdrew from the controversial U.N. body. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying in a statement, in part, quote, we will work hard to ensure the council upholds its highest aspirations and better supports those fighting against injustice and tyranny around the world. Despite the many human rights abusing nationals that sit on the council themselves, the statement goes on to say that the council plays a meaningful role Role in protecting human rights and fundamental freedoms by documenting atrocities in order to hold wrongdoers accountable. It focuses attention on emergencies and unfolding human rights crises, ensuring that those who are voiceless have a place to be heard. Let's bring in our next guest, Professor Eugene Kontorovic, Director of the Center for Middle East and International Law at George Mason University Scalia Law School. Professor, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming on today. Uh, you heard part of the statement from Secretary Blinken there. If you could just remind our viewers some context, why the former president decided to leave the council and why the current president is back in it. So the United States has a long history with the Human Rights Council. Uh, the institution used to be called the Human Rights Commission, and it was known uh, as ba basically being a place to bash Israel and whitewash the human rights abuses of dictatorships. And it, the situation was so bad that even the UN agreed to reform it in, a, in, a, in an attempt to lessen the influence of non-democratic countries. And they recreated, they rebranded the Human Rights Commission as the Human Rights Council. And guess what? It has exactly the same problems. The vast majority of its resolutions condemning particular countries deal with Israel. It has some of the world's worst human rights abusers sit on the commission judging uh, democracies. And as a result, um, the uh, George Bush uh, left, uh, stopped participating, U.S. participation in, uh, in the council. And then eventually President Obama rejoined, saying, we're going to fix the council, we're going to make it better. And guess what? It only gets worse. And its obsession with Israel gets more acute. And it uh, has partici um, on its uh, membership countries like Russia mm -hmm. and Venezuela. Yes. So as a result, President Trump quit the council. And guess what? Like coming back to an abusive relationship, the council is no better and the U.S. is rejoining. Hmm. Again, you, you mentioned some of the people who are members of it, and I'd like to show our viewers uh, a look at that. Again, we're hearing from the nonprofit organization UN Watch that only 31.9 percent of the current members of the human rights councils are free democracies. So that, so that goes to your first point. Second point here, the 68 percent who also sit on the council, uh, countries like China, Venezuela, Pakistan, who employ slave labor, as we know, hold political prisoners, uh, ab abuses against women as well. Your thoughts on who also remain on this council and, and what accountability really looks like for these member nations uh, considering their own human rights abuses that they commit? Yeah, the Human Rights Council provides a really important propaganda tool for these countries, countries like China countries like Venezuela, where it lets them sit in a UN body and be given the honor, the dignity of judging human rights of countries around the world. So at home, they use that for domestic propaganda. They use that um, to show that they're no worse than the United States. Now, the Biden administration says they're going to try to make it better and get more democracies on. But if that's the case, I, I would challenge the administration to commit to leave the council again if in two years it has not gotten substantially better. Because I believe that the uh, desire of the administration to participate in the council is not based on uh, any belief that it can really reform it, but a really ideological dedication to uh, internationalism and globalism. Really interesting perspective there, a story you don't uh, see get a lot of attention. Professor Eugene Kontorovic, thank you very much for coming on today, sharing your thoughts. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take Thanks. care. You too.